Hello everyone, myself Dr. Jyoti Mandala. Welcome you all to the video lectures on Object Oriented Programming through Java. We are in our lecture number 2. In this lecture, let us observe the difference between Procedure Oriented Programming Language and Object Oriented Programming Language. So, in our earlier lecture, uh, we have learned uh, what actually uh, object oriented programming language is and we as part of that we have considered Java programming language uh, in our previous lecture. We have seen what are all the areas it can be in the Java programming language has been used. We have uh, seen the uh, history of that one and install we have concluded the installation procedure. Okay, so before proceeding further, let us highlight the differences between the programming language which is divided into two types that is procedure oriented language and object oriented programming language. It is not confined to these two types only, we have other two types also, but in this lecture let us confine to these two types only. POP, procedure oriented programming language and OOP, object oriented programming language language so let us start with procedure oriented programming language uh, in procedure oriented programming language large program whatever is given for you that will be divided into a sequence of functions so a function can be also called as a procedure what it means is suppose you will be given a problem which is where you to solve that problem you need to write a program suppose to solve that problem uh, uh, your program consists of thousands of lines then what happens you need to write all those thousands of lines in one function only right now if any problem occurs in one of, uh, in one of the statement then you need to traverse all thousand lines and you need to check where the problem has occurred that means where the error has been occurred so to solve that one what we can do is we can divide our program into uh, a functions like in this example I am considering my program will be divided into three functions function 1, function 2 and function 3 and we have this function as a main function right as a simple example if you see if you want to perform arithmetic operations logical operations and bitwise operations let us consider then this function can perform arithmetic operations this can perform logical operations this can perform bitwise operations so uh, this is completely considered as one program this will be your main function later on this will be changed to main function so a large program is divided into sequence of functions each function can also be called as a processor right now uh, uh, each processor can call another processor during the execution of your program by ca simply calling its name suppose this function name this function one name is let us consider arithmetic operations that name is arithmetic operation so simply by using that arithmetic operations name this function can call this function or this function can call this function according to your requirement so processors one processor can call another processor simply by uh, using its name right but now in uh, processor oriented programming the main focus is on processors only not on the data that means how the tasks to be uh, solved how the arithmetic operations to be performed what are all the instructions required to solve that problem that task so the main focus is on processor only not on the data so uh, this follows the top down approach top down approach is nothing but this will be your main program main function and this main function can be divided into sub functions again this function if it requires again it can be divided into two more or three more uh, sub functions like this so we can call it as this main function be calling this sub function and this fu sub function can be calling this um, another sub function so this approach is called as a top down approach right now uh, in this uh, processor oriented programming language we have an, uh, a feature called a variable can be a global variable or a local variable so, okay now let us see we have three functions function 1 function 2 function 3 each function will have its own variables that means those variables are called as a local variable that means these variables will be accessed within this function only and these variables will be accessed within this function only these variables will be accessed within this function only but if you want to have a common variable for all these three functions then that variable is referred as a global variable as an example let us consider two variables as global global variables global variable 1 and 2 then this global variable can be accessed by these three functions and this global variable can be accessed by these three functions right so we have a concept of local variable and a global variable so because of this global variable concept there is no security to the data that means the data can be freely uh, moved from one processor to another processor whatever variable you are considering here that can be act 
move from this function to this function to this function. That means if the variable of a is 10 here, if the function 1 changes that value to 15, this the, that will be reflecting this function also. So, there is no security to the data if the variable is considered as a global variable. Okay, and also this is one problem and the another problem is if we need to change the type of the data, if you need to change the type of your global variable, then we need to revise all the functions that are using this global variable. Suppose if you are failing in one function also to in, uh, of changing the global variable type, then it may result in the error. So, let us consider this global variable has been accessed by these three functions. Now, if you are changing the type of this global variable, you need to change the type of the global variables and these three functions should be revised if you are revising one and two and if you forget this function three this one is three then you will get an error while executing your program so that is your second drawback so the main drawback of your processor oriented programming languages there is no security of the data and main focus is on processor only that means solution what are all the instructions to write that uh, that is the only uh, concentration in this processor oriented programming language and another thing is processor oriented programming language is not at all model to solve real world problems if you try to solve also it will not work very well right so examples of our processor oriented programming languages are c pascal uh, cobol basic Fortran. These are some of the examples of a processor oriented programming language. Now, these problems, whatever we have highlighted here, can be solved in our object oriented programming language, where uh, in object oriented programming language, data is secured. It does not allow uh, the data to be f flowing freely among the functions. Now, what happens is in this processor or object oriented programming language, uh, program is divided into object not procedures and for each object it will be having its own functions and objects its uh, function and data suppose this is one object and this object will have its own data and function and this data will be accessed by this function only uh, if you want one example let us take one example as a student object where for each student if you are considering data his role number name age and branch is considered as a data and it's his uh, uh, attendance percentage calculation and uh, pa like next one is his uh, percentage calculation Okay, so these can be considered as his functions. So, like that you can have objects and it is not like we will have only one function. Here in the example I have shown you two example, two functions. We can have more than one function and a program is divided into multiple objects like that. So, you can have object 1, object 2 and object 3. So, all these objects are combinedly called as uh, a, a program. Now, here if you observe here, there is no concept of a global variable. See here, this data can't be accessed by this function. This data can't be accessed by this function. So, they, the data is very secure. This data will be accessed only by these functions. This data will be accessed by only this function okay now how the objects will communicate the objects will communicate through the functions this is how the communication can happen okay so data of an object is accessed only by the functions associated by that object and object communication is happening through the functions associated with that object got it okay in oop the emphasis is given to data rather than procedure that means we are securing our data our emphasis is more on security of the data so uh, 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 rather than procedures emphasis is given to data so oops follows the bottom up approach bottom up approach is nothing but we need to first design our objects that is consider object consists of functions itself so we need to first design our objects and then we need to move to our main main function so this is a bottom up approach Okay, the examples of our uh, auto-oriented programming languages, Java, VB, Net, um, C hash, these are all the examples of our object-oriented programming language. So, with this uh, knowledge, let us identify the differences, let us highlight the differences between the procedure-oriented programming language and object-oriented programming language, whatever we have discussed till now. First one is, here it, the program will be divided into procedures, here the program will be divided into entities called objects. Here it is top down approach in procedure oriented and object oriented program it is bottom up approach. The main concentration in procedure oriented is procedures. The main concentration in object oriented is data. 
here there is no data security because global variables concept is there here there is complete security of a data because there is no concept of global variables and uh, uh, it is very difficult to develop or to model real world problems using procedure oriented programming language and we can model real world problems and it is very apt to develop applications uh, real world uh, applications using this object oriented programming language and if if you want to develop any medium sized project which consists of less number of uh, code of lines then we can go with procedure oriented programming language but if you want to develop large size of projects like uh, uh, large number of lines of in lines of instructions are there that means complex projects can be easily developed by using our object oriented programming language so these are some of the differences between our procedure oriented programming language and object oriented programming language so as an example of a procedure oriented programming language let us take c and as an example of object oriented programming language let us take java uh, because our course is completely about java and i think most of you have learned c programming language so let us highlight the differences between c and java programming languages okay okay now the first thing is obviously c is procedure oriented programming language and java is object oriented programming language and whatever differences we have highlighted in the earlier slide will be reflected here other than those differences i'll show you what are all the differences okay first one is c is compiled compilation is nothing but well, you can will be writing your program in a high level language and it should be converted into machine understandable format in c the program is compiled only but whereas in java the program is first compiled to generate the byte code and then that byte code will be interpreted to get your results right so we'll be compiling and we'll be interpreting two phases is required in our java programming language whereas for c it is only compiled and it supports pre processor directives where in c we used to we use hash define hash include those are called as pre processor directives which are required in our c programming language whereas in java the, it does not support that pre processor directives and uh, in c um, user has to take care of memory management like whatever memory is required if the memory is not required then it is our responsibility to free that memory using mlloc cloc we can allocate the memory using free we can deallocate the memory everything is under the control of user has to take care it is the burden of the user whereas in java it will be done internally like garbage collection will be taken automatically done also and c uses the pointers concept java does not support this points or pointers concept and c is platform dependent that means it will be run a code developed on one uh, platform will be executed on the same platform only but whereas java is platform independent in our earlier uh, lecture we learned like uh, write once and it can be run on multiple uh, operating uh, systems irrespective of the operating system once it is written in one uh, uh, operating system uh, there then that can be executed in multiple operating systems right once run anywhere approach is followed in java so this is a best uh, feature this is a good feature of our java next variable declaration is done at the beginning of the block only in c so if you are in the starting uh, after opening any function in the starting line should be your variable declaration if you forget to declare that variable in middle you can't declare again you need to go back there and you need to uh, declare your variable but whereas your java Um, before using that variable you can uh, declare that variable uh, that means variable declaration can be done anywhere but make sure like before using that you have to declare that variable uh, in c we have it uses global variables concept so there is no security but of data but whereas in java there is no global variable concept so see, these are some of the uh, differences between c and java uh, other than uh, what we have highlighted in our last um, Uh, slide so with this we'll come to an end of our second lecture where we have highlighted the differences between uh, procedure oriented programming language and object oriented programming language and also we have seen the differences between c and java programming languages also okay so let us all meet in our next lecture in the next lecture we'll see uh, the principles of object oriented programming language thank you